and welcome to the Afcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Today's episode, we have an interview with business owner and marketing manager, Linda Goldie, who was given a sign and decided to pick up sticks and move to Tenerife in record time, but arrived two days before the lockdown. Plus the latest on COVID-19 and the new normal, and the weather afcast for last week. This week also sees a new segment from Christina called SSDD. Enjoy the show and don't forget to subscribe. I publish every Sunday night, ready for your Monday morning commute to just start the week off with a bit of sun. Talking of sun, here's the weather afcast for Tenerife, week ending June 21st, 2020. Weird weather this last week. It started off cloudy, but warm. Then a hot gust of wind in the middle of the night pushed temperatures over 30 degrees at midnight. The next few days were sunshine as we expect in June, and today is clear blue skies and 25 degrees C in the shade. In the direct sunlight, you'd be looking way over 30, and in the night, temperatures didn't drop below 23 degrees C. As in the past few weeks, we ate every meal outside. You'll be able to return to these podcasts next year to find out what the weather was like in a particular week. Great for planning your vacation. COVID-19 update. We've now dropped below 75 active cases in the whole of the Canary Islands. Tenerife has 21 active cases, with only one new one in the past week. Declared in the north, but the person is registered in the south. So except for the one new case in San Miguel de Abona, Tenerife Sur has been mostly COVID-free for three weeks in Arona and over a month in the other southwestern municipalities. We've just entered the new normal opening up the borders to EU Schengen countries, plus a few others, including the UK. And except for Portugal, because there'll be a celebratory reopening of the Portuguese-Spanish border on July the 1st, attended by the King and political leaders of both countries. Because of the quarantine requirement in the UK, holidaymakers are not really the target. The decision to let in the UK was based on the over 400,000 second homeowners who are waiting to enter the country because before today, you needed a residency certificate to get in. A lot of the hotels are still not opening until mid-July or even August. Some are taking the time to refurbish and to be ready for the high season in October, November. We are Europe's major winter vacation location. The official bulletins from the central government and the Canarian government spell out the rules and the regulations regarding living with the post-COVID emergency, and main points are health measures in public places, bars, restaurants and clubs, plus the physical distancing rules and the wearing of masks. They're designed to afford the greatest protection without impacting the enjoyment of life and holidays. The beaches will have controlled access and upper limits. Capacity in bars and restaurants will go back to normal, but the overcrowding will come to an end. And that's why the clubs may open their terraces, but not their dance floors. Tune in next week to find out how the first week of the new normal panned out. Now we're going to jump over to a new segment where Christina is going to have a little chat. So this segment is quite new and it's uh, Christina. We've always said, how are you doing? And she's always said SSDD, which means same shit, different day. So Christina, how are you doing? SSDD. (laughs) But in a way, this SSDD sounds a bit negative. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite positive because it could be MSDD, which doesn't mean multiple sclerosis different day, but it means more shit different day. Okay, so it's positive because it's not changing that qu- that quickly. Right? Uh, okay. That's... Yeah, today we overslept a little bit. A little, yeah, a lot, I mean. And then our daughter and our granddaughter talked, uh, called on FaceTime. And that's quite a nice beginning of the day to see this little cutie. How old is she now? Eight and a half months. Oh, wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, we can't have fun with her. Because she's in Germany and we are here. But we've got the better weather. That's true. So what did you do last week? It's basically the same every day. I get up, do my ablutions, get dressed, have breakfast, and I lie in my chair a bit and listen to my book. And I go on my bike. Do you go far on your bike? Oh, yeah. Every day a bit further. My training bike, of course. Yeah, OK, it's a, it's a little motor med that Christina's got on the balcony, but she can go anywhere in her mind on that. That is right. And I listen to music while I'm on the bike. I really don't want to go out because it's a lot of hassle and I can't see much anyway, so might as well stay in. But we went to Alcala last uh, last week. You enjoyed that, though, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I always do, because I've got this red line where I can drive and I can't lose my way. OK, so it's because they've got this uh, red brick road, this sort of... Uh, yeah. ..this path that you can follow. Yeah. Because although people think you can see a lot, you don't really see much, do you? No, no, no. So what are the types of things that you that you see? I mean, if you can explain to people how you see, it's it's not that you're blind and it's all black, is it? No, it's not. I can't see faces, not at all. But you can see outlines of people, right? Yeah. So you know how wide I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. But in a way, it's good because every person looks good. To me. Thanks, I think. Yeah, <laughs> you, you look good too. What else do you want to tell our listeners? Cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I want to thank people who sponsored us, girls that helped a lot. For those that added extras and getting out and doing the stuff, then we'd just like to thank everybody that has sponsored us, bought us a coffee or even more, and... Uh, we really do appreciate that. So, Christina, it looks like you're drying up. So this SSDD segment, we'll ask you again next week whether anything changed. And uh, until then, thanks very much. I hope it says SSDD and does MSDD. Me too. Me too. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment for Christina and I'll make sure I read them to her. The interview today is a short story of a miracle which enticed a family from Scotland to Tenerife in no time flat. And that's up next. But first, thanks to all our sponsors and especially Lynn, James, Vincent and Timmy for your support. You can join them by buying us a coffee at our website www.timothydowd.com and pressing the sponsor button. If you want me to review a cafe, bar or restaurant, you can also sponsor the visit. Better still, come over in person when it's safe and be part of the show. Without further delay and through the power of the internet, I'll whisk you all back in time to last Friday and my third in-person interview. Enjoy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sat outside the Globe Pub in Costa del Silencio. And I'm here with Linda Goldie, and together with Jim, they have Goldie Joinery here in Tenerife. And welcome. Thank you. I appreciate the interview. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. OK, I've got a few questions for you. Yeah. You can answer them any way you like. So what made you move to Tenerife, and what were you doing before you got here? Well, basically, we have been coming here for years and years and years. Um, and we were expecting to come here retire over here probably in two years time but you know it just completely went on its head rocketed and I'm here now but there's a long story to get there to be honest with you um, I mean my husband and I we're born again Christians okay and you know God just made it happen you know they, they talk about miracles happening they talk about doors opening if the door's going to shut, it completely shut, there'll be another door open. But every door opened. And within the matter of five weeks, 
we had basically not sold up because my house is rented up uh, back home, but basically we were here. So the plan was to come over in a couple of years, yes. but then just things snowballed and mm -hmm. you arrived. Yeah. And absolutely. that was just before the lockdown, I believe. I arrived on the 13th of March with my cat. My cat was the last cat on the 2A flight. <laughs> the la what's, the, what's the name of the cat? Sydney. And he's, Sydney he's a ragdoll. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I, I, an attitude, a cat with attitude. Well, Sydney the cat with attitude. Uh, welcome to Tenerife. How's he doing here? Oh, he's absolutely having a great time, apart from social distancing with my new puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you doing in, uh, in back home, or where is back home, actually? Well, basically, um, I'm originally from a small town called Bones. Um, my husband's originally from um, Airdrie. But the two years moved to Falkirk, so I've been in, I've been in Falkirk for about 14, eh, 15 years, sorry. Um, I've got a cleaning company back home called GCS Scotland Limited. I employ about 25 uh, staff, and my husband's always done joinery. He's always been in business. Um, it, 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 his business used to be called uh, Goldie Joinery Scotland back home, but now of course that's not appropriate because we're here in Tenerife, so it's now just Goldie Joinery. Couldn't it be Goldie Joinery International? Oh well, it probably could be. <laughs> <laughs> so you decided to bring the joinery business over. Did you do any market research before you came? We know a lot of people over here. We know we've got quite a few contacts. In our, we own an apartment over here in Los Cristianas that, that we rent out, and basically we, we know a lot of people that, that were needing work done. And because my husband's a bespoke joiner, he's not just a normal joiner, he was really sought after back home. It was in the Ideals Home Exhibition 2015 and came Best Newcomer everything like that because he's work that he does uh, because it's all bespoke. Cool, so we have an award-winning joiner here on Tenerife at Goldie Joinery. Yep. That's great. And you're based now in Costa del Silencio or uh, nearby? Las Rosas. Las Rosas? Yeah, just up the road. Okay, and that was your that was the apartment that you already had? No, 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 that wasn't the apartment we had. Um, this is where it all gets get really uh, confusing and, and it all starts mingling in. Uh, no, my apartment is in Los Cristianos, um, in Chipeque. Um, but basically, I always wanted, when I, we retired over here, we always wanted a three bedroom house with land because I love animals and I wanted to have animals and somewhere safe because for my husband leaving his tools and things like that. And out of the blue came this house. I inquired about it one day, which was the Friday. I got no answer um, and I was already almost taken a property in Costa de Silencio, but I got an answer on Monday for to say this was available. Um, the guy couldn't speak one word of English, and me and my broken Spanish, we managed to communicate. I found out the place was available. I found out it was a three bedroom, it had a lock up, I had loads of land, and it was the same price as the one I was going to get for a one bedroom in Costa de Silencio. So, you know what? It was, it was basically a miracle, and it's just another door opened up just to confirm that we have to be here. That is fantastic. So it was a no-brainer, really. Exactly, exactly. So now you got here, and it was uh, two days later, <laughs> there was a lockdown. Uh, that's it. Two days later, there was a, little, a lockdown. And, you know, I will not say it wasn't difficult, because a lot of times it was. We got on each other's nerves, as you do. But basically... It was great because of where we were. We're in the middle of a banana plantation, so behind closed doors, we had a big 10-foot iron gate. We could walk up and down um, 927 steps each way. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. So going back to uh, coming over here and the doors opening, so uh, what happened when you made the decision? How quick was it from basically decision made to feet on the ground? Um, you mean to actually arrive in Tenerife? Yep. It was basically for my husband because he came um, five days before me, so it was basically four weeks. Four weeks. It was four weeks. That is a record. Yeah, I mean, I that, thought that, I thought we were doing good with the, with like a year. No, four weeks, and that was us um, getting someone to rent a property back home. Uh, my husband sold all his tools. Um, he had masses of machinery, and we did try and sell it before, and it didn't sell. And then I put it again one night on marketplace and. Uh, the area that we stay, and within two days, the full thing was sold. Wow, well, that's 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 really amazing. So the doors really did open yes, for you. Yes. So now the big job is to get the company up and running, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. And um, as, 
I do know quite a lot of people over here, which is great. Um, and we're part of the Tenerife Family Church over here, which is in Silencio with Pastor Bill. Um, so even within things like that, you know, there's um, we get there will be a bit of help there as well, because um, it's always better dealing with people that you know than people that you don't know, and they know the type of work Jim does anyway. So. So did you know these people beforehand, like the congregation or yes. what? You yes, did? not all the congregation. Um, I'm quite new to the, the congregation because we used to come on holiday maybe three, four times a year, or we're only here, um, you know, periodically. Um, it's only now that we're getting to know everybody, which is great. But we did know um, Pastor Bill, who, who also does um, a radio. Yeah, well, basically, you can hear it on the Expat 2 radio at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. He's got this new slot um, that he does every Sunday, and it's absolutely brilliant. So let's assume the business is up and running and you're, uh, you're fully fledged here on Tenerife. What are your future plans? Um, basically... We, we, I knew that when Jim was coming over, he would work um, with the joinery business, with, with, with bespoke joinery. Um, for me, to be honest with you, I haven't got a scooby, but I just, I know I'm here for a reason. I don't know what the reason is yet, but I'm sure God will reveal it to me. Um, I love animals. I would love to work voluntarily with animals. Um, I do have a new puppy, um, which is taking up quite a lot of my time. Um, but. To be honest with you, I don't know. I've got to support my husband and what he does. I do sales and marketing, so that's what, what I'm good at. Um, yeah, that's it. So I don't know what I'm going to do. OK, so you're up in the air. You're going to just wait to see what which door opens next, maybe. Absolutely. And if there's anybody out there that wants or has anything to do with animals and they're looking for a volunteer on a short-term basis, yeah. then get in touch and I'll uh, pass on your details. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. So a very quick interview today, but I'm sure that we're going to hear more of you. And if anybody wants to know um, how to get in touch with you or where to see any work that uh, the gym's done, where can they go? Well, they basically can go onto the Facebook. I've made up a Facebook page called uh, Goldie Joinery. Um, and it's just got the Goldie Joinery logo. Um, and Jim's van's been all sign rated as well, so you would see that on the on the page. Um, so, and that's basically it. A lot of his previous work I've put on. Um, he's only done one job so far, which, um, you know, has is um, it's quite a small job, but, you know, every job counts, and the guy was really pleased. He put a nice review up. Um, but some of the work that he has done, the bespoke stuff that he's done, like kitchens, um, uh, children's beds, um, animal beds, he made, makes dog beds. That's a lot of them are on the, the page. So if you do want to um, see it, all the information's there, the telephone numbers there, the the um, the actual email address, everything like that's there as well. So yeah. Okay. So if you're not on Facebook, just contact me at timothydowd.com, and I'll make sure that you get all the information you need. Anyway, so thank you very very much, Linda, for joining me today outside the Globe Pub, and. My local. Uh, it's the local. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So the Globe Pub in Costa del Silencio, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for interviewing me. I really appreciate that. Cheers. Thanks, Tim. Bye bye. Bye bye. Vamos a la playa. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and don't forget to contact me if you've got any questions. Thanks for tuning in. I publish every Sunday night, so subscribe to be notified. We have a Facebook page called Living With MS in Tenerife and can be reached by searching for at LWMST. Plus, we have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LWMST with new videos every Tuesday and a website at www.timothydowd.com where you can send me an email or sponsor the show. Until next week, stay safe and goodbye.